Hello everyone, welcome to the editorial analysis of the Shankar Ace Academy brought to you by the Civil Speedia team. These are the topics for today's discussion. So, both the articles are from the Hindu. So, the first article discusses about the contribution of women in the science and the next article discusses about the importance of mitigation process when it comes to the natural disasters. So, before moving into the article's discussion with the main question, the, there is just a small announcement to be made. The pre-fit uh, test series of the Shankar Ace Academy would be conducting from March 10th of 2025. So, the interested students can join the course through scanning the code as well as through the uh, link provided in the description below. So, to boost your prelims practice. So, look into this article, An Equitable Future for Women in Science in India. So, the article discusses about the importance of women in the field of science and their contribution, especially through today's day, that is the International Women's Day of March 8. So, in the field of science, technology, engineering and mathematics, that is system, the article discusses how there is more contribution and how there needs to be more improvement. So, this is the question, despite high female enrollment in STEM education, India has a low percentage of women in STEM careers. So, examine the reasons behind this paradox and suggest possible solutions. So, let us see the framework for this main question. First, looking into global and Indian representation of women in the STEM, according to a global study where 38 countries were taken into account, here there is higher attrition rates for women due to the workplace barriers. So, because of the workplace barriers, there is higher um, increase in women having uh, been to have enemies which hinders them to run up the social ladder. So, here in India, according to the survey of 2021 in STEM, nine, uh, taking 98 institutions in account, only 17% of STEM faculty are women. So, here there is a discipline wise representation in biology it is 17% and in engineering it is as low as 8 percentage. So, here the main reason is having under representation. Women are uh, overlooked in conferences and many career enhancing activities where sometimes they are not taken seriously. Now, let us have a historical perspective. First, in the 19th century, advocacy was created by the Matilda Jocelyn Gass, where uh, she fought for the recognition of women's innovation, especially in the field of science. So, a metaphor called a leaky pipeline here. Women dropout of STEM was due to mainly biases that is known as a metaphor called as a leaky pipeline here because of biases, lack of role models and having hostile workplaces. So, due to which representation of women is very low. Next is shoots and ladders model. So, shoots and ladder uh, ladders model is nothing but the snake and ladder game. So, here again it stands as a metaphor. It highlights the structural barriers, then the mentorship gaps, having a guidance and career disruptions especially for minority women. So, because of these hurdles, women have been facing a rise in the science field especially in the STEM. Now, significance of women in STEM, first is to boost innovation and research as usual here. It brings in gender diverse teams to enhance creativity. So, women are part of many projects such as the CRISP where it is a gene editing project where these are the women participants. Next is economic growth and workplace expansion here. According to the McKinsey report in 2019, if there is closing of the gender gap as a phenomenon, it could literally add uh, 12 trillion dollars to the global GDP. In India, only 14 percent of women in STEM or graduates enter the workforce. So, this report is according to the World Bank 2023. Next, it encourages future generations here. Role models like Dr. Tessie, who is known as the missile woman, have been an uh, inspiration and many other role models. Here it enhances social development, here contributions in different fields such as healthcare, environment, science, AI, for example, we can take Gagandeep Kang and uh, finally addressing global challenges. So, here also there are a lot of role models bringing in key roles in space exploration, for example, Kalpana Chawla, the one of the most famous role model and also the ISRO's Mangalyan team are mostly part of the female empowerment. Now, these are the barriers faced by women in STEM. First is limited access to STEM education through stereotypes, financial constraints and lack of role models. Then there is work discrimination. Definitely there is hiring biases, lower pay, fee, uh, fewer promotions, limited funding and glass ceiling effect, career interruptions and work-life balance. So, definitely uh, maternity breaks caregiving responsibility, societal expectations and societal judgments can be seen as a barrier. Next is lack of safe and inclusive workspaces, harassment, gender bias in research credit, then exclusion from leadership where they are not given much responsibility can also be a reason and under representation in leadership. 
as I told only 14 percent of the STEM leadership roles in India are held by women. So, let us look into few government initiatives for gender equity in science. First is the GATI in, uh, scheme in 2020 by the Department of Science and Technology. So, it is uh, approved as gender advancement for technological institutions. Uh, sorry, there has been a mistake in this slide. So, here their aim is mostly for having supportive environment for women's scientists and bringing in inclusive education. Next is the scheme wise Kiran. So, the abbreviation is women in science and engineering, knowledge, uh, involvement in research, advancement and uh, through nurturing. So, this is the abbreviation for the wise Kiran. So, this is their aim and again it is by the Department of Science and Technology. Next scheme women scientists 2022 stands as a financial assistance. Next biotechnology and career advancement in research orientation by the department of biotechnology supports women in biotechnology next program vijayan jyoti program and swati portal encourages for stem mainly for girls and indian women so these are the recommendations for systematic change which are very very easy to understand first it is very simple that is recognizing women's contribution having bringing in early intervention through policy and legality having reintegration of women in science such as support career in uh, when they re-entry after breaks and having institutional reforms especially through the workspace. Here next article titled the Himalayan tragedy where the latest uh, avalanche natural disaster has brought in the debate on how important having a mitigation process as well as having a natural disaster management especially for other natural uh, disasters. So, in light of this article, let us see a main question regarding the natural disasters. Natural disasters through unpredictable can be controlled in terms of their impact. Discuss the challenges associated with disaster management in Himalayan regions and suggest measures to mitigate their effects. So, let us see the article's discussion here. One of the main condition, especially in the Himalayan areas to have the natural disasters is the unpredictability and harsh weather conditions. So, there are frequent avalanches and snowstorms due to their weather conditions and it is very difficult to predict as well as to mitigate. So, for example, the 2020 CHN glacier avalanche killed 6. So, it leads to casualties not just property damage or uh, damage to people but also casualties. Next is due to the heavy tem uh, temperature, extreme temperature variations. So, because of the climate change, there is hinder rescue operations and uh, melting of snow can be taken as a reason. So, here we can take the example of greening of uh, Antarctica as a metaphoric ideology to uh, imagine how difficult it is in the Himalayan regions to have their mitigation process. And next is having delayed emergency response here due to heavy snowfall and roadblocks especially. Next having inadequate infrastructure and accessibility such as having poor roads and communication network. So, here in 2023 during the Kedanar floods there were a lot of lack of access to roads which made difficult to the rescue team. So, here block roles can lead to the remote and remoteness can be seen as a conditions for the rescue team to reach the uh, people who are affected such as other natural disasters such as landslide and snow accumulation can bring in delay in the relief. Next is having unsafe con uh, construction and lack of disaster resistant infrastructure. So, take this word as the most important here. Here having unplanned construction in landslide prone zones. For example, in 2023, the Joshimath land uh, can be seen as a crisis. Next is lack of winter ready shelters for migrant workers. So, they are prone to disasters. Next is having limited awareness and preparedness such as inadequate training and safety measures for the locals as well as the workers. Here for example, you can take in 2001 the Chamoli glacier burst where there was no early warning system at all. So, this leads to the inefficient use of the technology bringing in limited use of remote sensing and AI for disaster. For example, in 2015 the Nepal earthquake was also not predicted as there was lack of effective prediction systems. And finally, is the environment degradation and climate change. Of course, rising temperatures increases the glacier melting, glacier lake uh, outburst floods and avalanches. So, for example, in 2023, the, uh, the Sikkim flash floods were due to the uh, lake burst. And next is deforestation and soil erosion bringing in uh, uh, soil edimens to destabilize the mountain slopes. So, we have to see the measures to mitigate the disasters. First, of course, 
having early warning system and technology here satellite based monitoring where uh, organizations like the isro and the national remote sensing center have been working so national remote sensing uh, center is mainly used for geospatial next ai driven prediction models for real time analysis here you can take even uh, ai uh, maps also having next is disaster resilient infrastructure for example climate resilient roads and buildings example atal tunnel and having mandatory compliance with the building codes so it shouldn't be voluntary it should be mandatory in nature next is having community awareness and preparedness so having uh, organizing drills and awareness program not just for the uh, police and the army or the <coughs> rescue team but also for the people so here for example indian army and national disaster uh, response force uh, avalanche survival training then incorporating disaster education in school curriculums next is having improved coordination and sustainable development so bringing in centralized this uh, disaster response mechanism for example himalayan disaster management authority so here also the state plays an important role next is regulated construction and land use planning for uh, sustainable using of the planning sorry land for example supreme court have mandated environmental impact assessment so eia especially for land use next is afforestation and slope stabilization projects so here we can take few examples such as antarctica's disaster ready shelters japan's earthquake resistant infrastructure and switzerland's avalanche protection technique and seen as a global best practices to learn on how to bring in measures to mitigate disasters so having a way forward first is to improve the early warning systems having satellite sensors and community warning system train the locals for quick response so building in stronger infrastructure we have seen resilient buildings and more tunnels and all season roads as it will reduce the blocking of the roads next is strengthening the disaster response so bringing in special teams collaborating with the neighboring countries as well as different departments educate and train people bringing in safety drills in villages schools involving local communities and emergency response and having awareness and seriousness of this situation protect the environment such as stopping the uncontrolled construction in risky areas and promoting the afforestation and other sustainable eco friendly tourism and having better policies here of course policies are important so bringing in special uh, rules and legal and strict environmental checks for big projects Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you are at the end of the video. Don't forget to give a like, comment and a share. And to further not to miss any other content, subscribe to our channel. Thank you and have a nice day.